the change in the personnel. Brian Robson to call. And some hesitation. As the rock for Dovchik once. Meanwhile, Peter Shilton gets the final test. That's a confirmation of the lineup. Really, the only decisions that uh, Bobby Robson had to make concern substitutes. And it's interesting that he's chosen Michael Phelan, ex Norwich City, now Manchester United. Should there be any tightening of the midfield or any problems, heaven spare us for Brian Robson. Otherwise, the team selected itself after the injury to Barnes. Photographers going for the group picture of the Polish side. You've only played once since the match at Wembley. And that was against Spain in La Corona when they lost by one goal to nothing. The one defender in their side is Tchaikovsky. Cha and they've got a whole posse of midfield players with Kozetsky, Jekanowski and Schaubert seemingly likely to be the front three. England playing in red, Poles in white with red shorts in their national colours. A point is what is required. Poland need to go for the victory. They could still finish with eight points if they were to win all three games. First bank pass has threatened to be a little short, but wasn't. And Early feel of the ball for Peter Shilton. First free kick is England's way. Steve McMahon wearing four. Taken by Lineker. Something of the scourge of Poland in recent matches. Here's the tall Baku who played at Wembley. He still played against Sweden and unfortunately for him made an error in the last minute of the match which gave the Swedes a victory. Certainly playing with three up Poland as the goal kick is taken. Baku never seems to like to take them. Butcher covering, but there was a little bit of an elbow anyway by Czechanowski. England with two up. Lineker and Beardsley. Beardsley out to the left, looking for him. Little touch, but Waddenlock coming onto it. And that's Vashika. There are two Vashikas in the side, but they're not related. Robert plays for Gornick and wears five. And Kristoff, who played at Wembley, plays for Ruk Hosuf. And we are, strictly speaking, just into Hosuf. Chaubert with the throw. And then keeping all back by one. Tchaikovsky, forced to go back by the presence of Waddle. Schaubert, Tchaikovsky and Kozetsky are the three players forward. Tchaikovsky wearing 10. It's Kozetsky out on the left side. And the free kick is given. First test perhaps for Peter Shilton. They pushed five into the area and one further back, just outside the area. Nagoski is just outside. It's hit long. That's a good challenge. With denied Chaubert.
That's a goal kick. And we've had three minutes. Peter Shilton in no hurry to take the goal kick, so an opportunity for the first words from Trevor Brookie. Well, I don't think there's uh, any doubt that Poland are, are going to push forward. They've really got the three centre-backs and then four in midfield and three up front, and, and they need to win themselves if they've got a chance in this group, and it's very important from England's point of view that they don't get the crowd behind them early on. That's a good turn. And Bashika gets it in. Shot came from Jekanowski. Well, it was a good opportunity. In fact, the, the player running in on it uh, would have been the best place one rather than the player with his back to goal. Looking at the move again, they made good space on the right side. And Czekanowski didn't really get hold of it. The player to his left was better placed. Coming from the back, Kazmarek. Tchaikovsky plays for Stal Mielec. Side drawn from nine different clubs, three players from Legia Warsaw. This is Mashika. To his namesake. Nabrowski trying to play it through. Good blocking by Butcher. And I think we're going to learn a bit about the... Uh, England defence of this contest yet to concede a goal but a lot of people aren't very sure about how sure it is Mashika seems to be much the orchestrator of the attack but the free kick has been given for the uh, push and Kodoshevic Kodoshevic one of the Foreign players, he plays for Neuchâtel, who plays his football outside Poland. I mean by foreign players, because one of them is the man trying to challenge there. Beaten by Butcher of Rangers, that's Czekanowski of Celtic. Offside against Lineker. A few horns making themselves heard. That's Tadashevich. Tchaikovsky. There's Marek again leading from the back. Pass us too much. Peter Shilton. Played in all four previous World Cup matches against Poland with mixed memories. Counts the goal by Damaski is one of those that he would happily forget. That's the goal that uh, produced the 1-1 at Wembley in October of 1973, which coupled with the victory of the Poles in this stadium, saw England out of the 74 World Cup. Goal kick. Beaten with Stevens, but the cover is there. There's Walker who went across. <laughs> Very wide and fairly gruesome from Tadasiewicz. That's the name of the country, of course, here. Nabrowski. Butcher. More up than on. I'm going to battle for it a little bit. Pierce getting in. But not comfortably. 
Walker having to recover. Bit of a push by Kozetsky. Came on as a substitute at uh, Wembley. Stuart Pearce of Nottingham Forest. Beardsley, not too much room for manoeuvre. Taken by Robson nicely. This is Waddle. Brocastle held it well. It wasn't a good challenge. He's done well. Shot from Brian Robson. As well held with Lineker coming in. Stefanowski's gone wide to the left. In the main, it's uh, Walker who's with him. Kozetsky's wide to the right, wearing number nine. Tchaikovsky. What a movement by the front three of Poland. Tchaikovsky's now out on the right. And getting inside the pullback, Pierce. Diagonal runway, that's created a bit of space for Tadasiewicz. Has support to the left, but didn't use it, but a free kick has been given. Two men wide to the left. Walker's challenge, a little bit of a push first, and then the referee didn't like the boot either, apparently. Christoph Fashika moving right to left across the 18-yard line. Kozetsky is to the right, the near side as we look. To the left now as we look in that picture. Kozetsky and Chikonovsky, the greatest threat, except from the shot from Tarasiewicz. Gets a bit of luck with the bounce, ended by Pierce. Past the 10 minute mark, no score. Waiting for the ball to come back there, Stuart Pierce, but at the moment the English defence uh, dealing with everything, but uh, you don't feel totally happy. So it was the far one, I think. Put up on a road castle. Stevens able to recover the route to the back pass is blocked, but it's still played and played well. What confidence from Steve McMahon. Both in his goalkeeper and more importantly at this level in his own abilities. Might have sent the pass rate up a little bit at home, though. This is Waddle. Linick has pulled away to the far post. Robson just inside the 18-yard area. Pierce is cross. But it was played at a stretch. The ball was actually a little bit too far out of range to get his foot round it. Shikinovsky's covering the most enormous amount of ground. And here he is again. That's promising. Or worrying, depending on whose side you're on. through to Lineker. Tchaikovsky didn't cut it out when he should have. Rowcastle. 
Four in the box for England. Met by Tchaikovsky. McMahon. Hit quite strongly at Waddle. This is Vashika. Gives it away. Just too far away from Lineker. And there was a slight stumble by uh, the goalkeeper. Blanco. Tadashevich. Dabrowski leaves it to, to Tchaikovsky. Dabrowski again. Robert Vashika. Tadashevich. Hounding by Beardsley. Tadashevich. Wanting somebody to go on. Chaubert. Chekhanovsky. Stopped by Walker. Oh! Dumping drive and turned away by Peter Shilton. Really, that was hugely well struck. And a very good save. Robert Bashika, it was. Got a deflection, too. Just the fingertips, I think, from Shilton. But anyway, the deflection was going to take it for the corner. Waddle back on his six-yard line. Hey, hey. Met well by Walker. This is Nabrotsky. Ball was up. There's no doubt at the moment the, uh, the speed and movement of the ball of the Polish side is causing England defence problems. And in particular, in midfield, I think Teresjevic has got to be picked up much tighter because he is running the game from that area. And we've had 15 minutes of England's final match in Group 2 in the World Cup. No score. Waddle might have got away if he can do it first time. Gets the, gets the corner. Beardsley coming across to take it. Butcher striding towards the near post. Alongside Waddle. Nicker further over. Brown Robson poised for the run. And Bako gets there first. McMahon. Not really sure whether that was intended as a cross or a shot, and I suspect he might not be either. Podovchik. Podovchik played at Wembley, and uh, since taken over as captain. Tchaikovsky this way, number two. Again, movement from the players up front, trying to create some space and very nearly getting through then. It's Kozetsky. McMahon, Tadashevich, he wasn't used in the starting lineup in the first match at Wembley, Tadashevich came on as a substitute but, but he didn't have too much opportunity to show what he can do, certainly doing so here, this is Robert Bashika, Chekhanovsky taking over. Gary Stevens, his first foray forward. Roe Castle, who was in the right back position as Stevens went forward. Free kick is given. 
just as the Poles thought they were going to have a break of four on three. Butcher is up in a line with the near post as we look. Comes further over to Chris Waddle. Three waiting. One of them is Robson. That's curling. Was comfortably headed out. <laughs> but the follow up shot from McMahon wasn't too bad, was it? Bit of a daisy cutter. came out from uh, Kazmarek, met first time, and very well struck indeed. Tchaikovsky, to Vidob Vidobchik. Kuzgetsky tries to run down the middle, it looks too long, and is Beaten by Vodovchik. Castle. Brad Castle again, not picked up. He didn't actually control it too well. But the corner is won as we come up to the 20th minute of the match. No score. England's second corner. As usual, Lineker will be joined by Butcher. Takes the near post position. Lineker further over. Waddle to take from that side. Curling in. Robson has come forward. That's a good claim by Bacco. Offside. Tchaikovsky breathing all over him. This is a good run by Steve McMahon. It's committed the back man who wins it well. It's a slight knock. There's Marek. Beardsley, Lineker having to backpedal, still gets the knockdown. Kozetsky, quickly in was Walker, Rowcastle. England have an extra man, but couldn't make any use of it. Lineker. Schaubert, who chased back with him. And here's Tadasiewicz, showing good pace with carrying the ball. Jekinovsky inside, needs somebody coming up square. Still two waiting. Mashika is one of them. And a good close down by the England captain. Got a deflection for the corner. And Robson stays down. Really had to go in as the spare man came up on the edge of the area to strike it. Well, it was Butcher and there's Walker who went in and uh, have a feeling it was one of their own defenders that probably trying to block it themselves hit Brian Robson and let's hope it's not uh, it's just a, a new injury rather than the one that kept him out recently. Well, there's no mean try by Just Christoph Ashika. Chekhanovsky looks up to see in hope and Robson is Just okay. Bear to take the corner. Kozeski waiting on the far side. Goes all the way back. England start coming out. 
shot was from a very long way back by Vodovic. A curious use of the corner. They definitely like to play the ball around on the floor. I mean, they're, they're quite a small side, but very quick and nippy. I mean, a vastly improved team from, from that we saw at Wembley in June when I, I thought they looked a very poor side technically and heart-wise. But uh, tonight they've come out and certainly mean to try and get the win that they need to keep the group alive. And it's up, uh, as you say, to the English defence in particular now that, that are really going to be tested. As Marek starts at the back again to Vodovic. Looking long. There's good variation too. They use the long ball. They use pace. Push it around. And Chekhanovsky, number 10 there in the middle of the picture, is uh, when he hasn't got the ball, he's always looking to create space for somebody else or indeed for himself. This is Chaubert. Missed the trip to Wembley because uh, he had a court case to attend to. Lavrovsky. And Shilton didn't come until slightly later, perhaps, than uh, he might have wished. And Chikonovsky it was who went in. There was a slight hesitation there between defender and goalkeeper. But England escaped. And the volume is turned up for the corner. Chikonovsky just outside the six-yard area. Curling, well met by Butcher. This is Nabrotsky. Trying to keep his eyes on the ball when a herd of Englishmen were coming down on him. Let's see. Wouldn't come for him too kindly. Beardsley it was who got in for the block. Two others and Butcher between him and the goal. Robson showing no ill effects from that knock of a few minutes ago and with 25 minutes gone and still leading his side to the point which would be enough not necessarily to win the group but to book a place in next year's World Cup finals in Italy on by the by the dop chick and the free kick is given oh, a little bit of holding on Bashika Christoph Bashika the other was Sheikha number five, which is where he might be involved in the free kick. Shekhanovsky turns, plays it inside. What a lovely bit of shielding of the ball. That's where the free kick came, but it was off the ball, in fact. Given against Walker. Dobchik and Tarasiewicz on the ball. Schubert just to their right. Pashika a little bit further over. Oh, dear. And they won't worry too much about free kicks like that. Svodovchik. One of the players from Legia Warsaw. His 36th cap. But if he wants to cap it with something memorable, he has to do rather better than that. Stevens. Beards did run away for a second. Talking by Kazmarek. Walker. Kazetsky. Mashika. Dobrotsky coming forward. This is out to Pierce. Typical challenge by the Nottingham Prize fullback. Lineker. Uncomfortably for Waddle, but out was it? Yes, it was. Denying the ball to Chekhanovsky. Chakovsky. Robert Vashika. Free kick has been given. Against Waddle. A lot of it to Robert Bashika. 
Janoska goes forward. Vashika in possession. Now Tarashevich got a very good left, as we've already seen. I like to go down for the free kicks. I think uh, English defence will have to be very careful near the penalty box, please, because they look a side that will be looking for penalties. Marek. Rotsky. Five poles in attacking positions. Vashika. Shilbe, who started it, wants the ball back in midfield. Here he is. Binsley got goal side briefly. Navrotsky. Ashika, it's a good cross and a good save. Chikanovsky again with a header. What a nice move, and they certainly got round the back then. Third Polish corner, fourth Polish corner, I beg your pardon, and uh, England will be relieved that it's no more than that. It's a very, very good attack. Butcher and Chikanovsky together in the six yard area, out by Pierce. This is Nabrotsky. Lineker getting there just enough to put off the through ball again. Great four or five man movement by the Polish side, and there's then coming outside Chris Waddle across into the middle. And really, Chikanovsky anywhere in the right hand side of the goal it would have been in. Peter Shilton making a good save, but it was a nice fight for him to get across to. crowd in pretty good voice and with reason to be but with half an hour gone a third of the contest it remains nil nil but the balance of the play is hugely left to right Starting another Polish attack. There have been many of them and of different style. Free kick is given against Pierce. And Dobrotsky. by Vashika. And uh, Chaubert looking for a second opportunity as he couldn't control the ball. But there was no appeal. And no justification for one. Lineker. Rare English moment of possession here. Ends by Nabrotsky, rather a blind pass by Peter Beardsley. He gets back, but uh, the free kick is conceded. He really wasn't up alongside Nabrotsky when he tried to get the challenge in. Wasn't quite as quick as Polish television uh, showed us. Bashika. Tarasiewicz. Great strike from. Kazmarek. The anticipation of a goal among the crowd can really be felt. No free kick for the challenge on Lineker. He turns in disappointment. Zetsky. Tarasiewicz. Coming on the right and showing us he can hit them with that foot as well. It's from an awfully long way out. That was a good 35, maybe even 40 yards, that shot. It's 
quite happy to come either side. That was the previous shot, which was very well turned away by Peter Shilton. Once again, Trevor, it's a story of uh, Shilton putting out the stops when they're needed. Robson. By uh, his standards, he won't think he's been called upon to do anything too impressive as yet. Lang stays down, and Baku comes to the feet of McMahon to concede, not the corner. Well, the linesman indicating the goal kick, but the referee says no corner. The linesman's flag clearly indicated that it should be a goal kick. Good piece of goalkeeping. Good running, too, by McMahon, who beat any attempt at offside. Spread himself well to the big goalkeeper. seems that the communication between the Spanish linesman and the Spanish referee works, but not to England's advantage. Charles still trying to work that one out, but uh, it was a, just a brief respite, really, for England, because they, they have really been on the rack, and uh, you can understand the Polish crowd getting behind their side, because they have been playing some super football. Thompson trying to get Rogarsalen. Walker coming across. It's Stelau, now the manager of the side, a former player with Legia Warsaw, was also in among the coaches of the Polish side in 73-74 under Jan Gorski. Um, he was the manager then, I remember, and uh, Jacek Gamot was the coach. And together, not only did they put England out of the World Cup, but they finished in third place. I think they repeated in 82 in Spain. to be rather written off because they went out didn't qualify for the European Championships but it should be remembered they lost in their group to Holland they got the cost to win the European title Beardsley for England Rokhauser for England and uh, Lineker having to pull back and gets the pull back but nobody challenging Tadashevich This was predictable. Robson's challenge. Mounted to a body check and not much more. Zuganowski, Christoph Pasike, both on the 18 uh, yard line alongside Zetsky. Very generous 10 yards. Czekanowski couldn't get there. Walker did. Podopczyk. Space here for Christoph Oshika. Czekanowski takes over. Looks for the curler. Another good stop by Peter Shilton. They've all been at a, a nice goalkeeping height, but even so, he's had to keep them out. Very clear attempt. Tchaikovsky took over at the curler. And the corner has been taken and produced no danger. Tech to, to playing uh, the all the midfield players for Poland is certainly working. That was Tchaikovsky who's playing right back tonight. But certainly that wasn't the curl of a right back. And everyone looks so comfortable and technically good on the ball. That's that's the impressive thing about the, the new look Polish side. Interesting, in fact, Trevor, that he, if you look at the club records, is the only one who put himself down as a defender. And he's been coming forward as much as anybody else. There's Robert Pasika of Gornik. 
Yeah, the Vashiga could have taken that first time, but he might second. That's a corner. But taking it first time, he had a clear shot. And the corners are mounting. Number six for the poles. Twist and turn. Came off the second defender, not the one who was trying to get the tackle in. Worrying times continue for England. Butcher concedes another. And six and a half minutes of the first half still left on the watch. Kozetsky. Ball was already out. Kozetsky turns in disappointment. In his 14th cap, 23 years old. One of the players from Legia. Peter Shilton. It's 1-1-1 one, one, one this evening. Brodsky. Lineker. Rowcastle. Robson. See very few combined movements from England. Preoccupied with defence and... Uh, Really, they've not threatened Baku, except my memory serves me well. The shot from uh, McMahon, and indeed the follow-through from McMahon with Baku diving at his feet. This is Nabrowski, that's a foul by Roadcastle. Ashika. trying to change the angle of the attack but uh, lost a bit much main reason England haven't been able to get them forward is that Waddle Row Castle the wide people and McMahon Robson the central midfielders have been so busy helping out defensively they've, they've never been able to get forward to support Gary Lineker really and Peter Beersley and uh, it really has been uh, attack against defence yes, I don't think there's any question is there that uh, England are playing defensively, they aren't being offered any choice in the matter. Would you take the free kick? We're inside the last five minutes of the first half. In fact, Walker takes it. Waddle. Both sides appeal. The referee looks at the linesman. It's the home side ball. Tchaikovsky bringing Baku into the play. Masika is Marek. That could be a gift. Beardsley. He had the time to undo the string before he was challenged twice. One of them bids, they're both on the ball. England at the moment have only two players forward. Now three. Third arrival is Butcher. And a chance for a cross here from Waddle. It's well claimed, but it was a good cross too. It had Butcher coming in behind the goalkeeper. Baku is a big lad, coming up to 6-4. Uh, Bashika. Vodopchik, the skipper. Kuzetsky, good challenge by Walker. Tchaikovsky again. Chikanovsky comes short for it, so does Vashika. Vashika goes away down the middle. Chikanovsky in the inside right position. We're happy to keep possession of the poles until they can see the opening and change the pace. They must be wondering why they didn't play like this earlier in the competition. Might have been in with a real shout. 
major difference between away and home form. But the side has been changed so much. Lineker. More promising for England. More space here for Waddle. Roski trying to get back to close it down. Only committed two up, now three. It's a testing one again, and Baku has to recover. Free kick is going to be given against Rare Castle. A couple of promising breaks by Chris Waddle. This one was trying to get his toe underneath it that little bit more, but he did have to stretch all his six foot four to get to that. Brian Robson, it was coming in at the far post. Alshevich again, the starting point of the Polish attack. Nil nil. And we're inside the last minute of the first half. Chauvet. Well, the first half really, um, it does keep like this. Uh, England players will walk off knowing they'll be probably greatly relieved to be all square. Defensive played very well, always just got the leg in the way, paddled well. Peter Shilton made some vital saves, but I think they've got to think about getting forward more, you know, just to relieve the pressure on that defence. Chase again, and uh, Butcher turns and has a little discussion with Chilton, who initially started to come, but went back. It was Kozetsky in the challenge. That was the moment you just saw Chilton starting to come forward. Now playing the time the referee allowed, really, for the injury to Brian Robson. There wasn't too much of that to allow. So we reach half time in the Staski Stadium in Wotsov. And the score in this World Cup qualifying match is Poland nil, England nil. Well, Jimmy and I have now been uh, joined by Bobby Charlton. And you missed about the first three minutes, but since then you've seen Poland all the way, really, isn't it? I mean, yeah, I've been, I've been very worried, I must admit, watching that uh, and all the chances. We depend a lot on Peter Shilton this afternoon. It just seems that everybody seems so lethargic. They're going to people without putting the foot in, trying to win the ball. I think the mere fact that a, a draw will be enough to get them through seems to be on the mind instead of being positive and going forward and beating them. Because I don't think they're a great side, these, but any side, given space and time, and, and, and uh, especially around the 18-yard area, you know, is going to take advantage sometime. You can't keep letting them have shots and getting behind people. But they have been in danger that first half, uh, Jimmy, haven't they? I mean, well, they have really indeed. I think they've given us a football lesson. I think they've had the capacity to take on a man, not frightened when they are close marked, and they've beaten the man first and then started the movement going. They've done that continually. Their shooting has been excellent when they've had shooting chances. I mean, the lad should have a whip round for Peter Shilton tonight. Otherwise, you know, we, we would be in desperate trouble. He's had his ups and downs against Pelham, but he's had his ups today in that match without a doubt. We'll develop those points a little bit later on, but first let's show you what happened in the Group 6 match in Dublin today between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. The Republic are in green shirts and the commentator is Tony Gubber. Oh, O'Neill. Away by... Mick McCarthy. Well, Michael O'Neill so close to getting his second goal for the North. Now Fleming. O'Neill again. Good ball in. He's missed it. Oh, Bonham missed it. And Robbie Dennison was the man who couldn't quite put it into the Republic net. Clark and Moran back to Bonner and now the Republic can settle down because that was a let off O'Neill who burst through the shot was blocked by Bonner and hooked away by McCarthy Fleming and McDonald penalised for pushing in the penalty area 
Well, it's been tight. It hasn't been particularly attractive, John. But as you said, perhaps the best chances have certainly fallen to Northern Ireland. And it'll be interesting to think what Billy Bingham's words will be to the team at half-time. I think Billy Bingham will just say, carry on as you're doing. Uh, really, Northern Ireland don't want half-time to come because Jack Trotton could organise the Republic team and make a few changes. But Northern Ireland seem completely in control at the moment for, for getting a result. Whelan. Oh, Whelan. Quick thinking by Ronnie Whelan as Dunlop punched the ball and he didn't get enough distance. What quick thinking it was by the Liverpool player. Stoughton who hooked the ball in and maybe Dunlop was at fold here. He was under pressure. He didn't punch the ball far enough. Ronnie Whelan was so quick to see the opportunity and right in by the foot of the post. Donick is header. Clark lays it back to Whiteside. Dennison gets around Morris, chased by Houghton. And that'll be a corner. So a good start for Northern Ireland. Corner in the first 30 seconds. McDonald and Mal Donaghy have both come up from the back. Whiteside shielding it, tries to turn around Staunton. Back to Wilson on his right foot. Dennison deflected. Certainly a, a appeared to strike somebody, and it may well have been a teammate. Shooty with the second corner. Away by Whiteside. Whelan beautifully played out to Shudi. Inviting left foot. Cascarino! Tony Cascarino's fifth international goal has put the Republic firmly in the driving seat against Northern Ireland. It was a beautiful cross in by Kevin Sheedy. And Cascarino, who had a good first half, out jumps the defenders and puts it wide of Dunlop. And this is brought away by Ronnie Whelan. McDonald, Aldridge, Hatton. And Chris Morris is streaming up on the right, the fullback. Faced by Worthington. Chipped up for Aldridge! Oh! How close can you come without actually scoring? Staunton. Cascarino. Townsend. Nice ball. Houghton, no offside. Looking for Aldridge, and it was Worthington. And they're being Paul ragged at the back. And if this carries on, there's every sign of more goals for the Republic. Shidi with the corner. Oh, off the post this time, Aldridge. He wrings his hands in despair. McCarthy's there, and now safely to Dunlop. Well, John Aldridge. Disappointed to have only netted once in his 26 outings for the Republic, but he's been so close here on two occasions. McCarthy. Cascarino. Houghton. Townsend. Showed too much of that, did he, to Maldonaghy. Morris. Townsend. Looks around and finds that he's got space and time. Sheedy. Houghton. Oh, beautiful goal. 3-0 and the whole of the Republic join in noisy celebration it's all over now Republic of Ireland 3 Northern Ireland 0 and Italy beckons and Jack Charlton's Republic look as if they're going to go there in real style Good little bit of footwork by Houghton to get free of his marker and then drilled it wide of Dunlop and just inside the post. Well, 3-0 is how it finished. The Republic are in the finals if Spain win in Hungary tonight. Let's have a word now from Ireland manager Jackie Charlton. Probably the lads were over-motivated. You know, uh, we didn't settle in the first half. Ireland settled with, Northern Ireland settled in it much better than we did the first half. But the second half, I thought, 
the little bit of quality we've got in one or two of our players and their passing start to show. And, and I thought we'd finish up a bit fortunate to win 3-0. Maybe the game should have been 1-0, 2-0. But, you know, I, I don't want to go through that one again for a while. Jack's a top man for over-motivating. Well, of <laughs> course, uh, Hungary plays Spain tonight. If Spain were to win that match, which is in Hungary, then the Republic definitely go through. But one more point will absolutely clinch it for them. We'll be back on BBC Two in just a few seconds to continue with England against Poland. Vici, it's Poland nil, it's England nil, and as we've been saying, if you've been with us on BBC One, it's been all Poland in that first half. Bobby Charlton and Jimmy Hill here with us to, we hope, enjoy the second half. But Jimmy, uh, Shilton had a, had a marvellous time in that first half, but it was chances all the way for Poland. Let's have a look at one or two of them, shall we? Yes, uh, it, was, uh, it was a first-class goalkeeping performance, but also a first-class shooting performance. I mean, they were nearly all from distances. This is a left-foot one. He was allowed too much space here. Bob and I were talking, you know, um, they're chasing back to try and cover him, but no one's getting out to him. Uh, they get out too late. There are three players there, any one of whom could have closed that ground. But look at that, a left-handed save. That was hooking inside the post there, and he only got it with the end of his fingers. Yeah. Uh, there wasn't much It was fingernails almost, that Indeed, one, isn't it? Yeah, Just about yeah. tipped it away. So, I mean, that, that was bad defence, because they were letting him run at the ball, and we had men to spare there to go towards him. And he was allowed to run, what, 10 yards to the left there yeah. without being closed. At the start of the programme on BBC One earlier, we picked out the, the Celtic player, Czekanowski, who's, yeah. uh, who's been playing really well. And we were saying, weren't we, that uh, he's a man in form, and he certainly looked at uh, today. This was the second good chance for them. Well, he was involved. Yeah. Goal scorers, when they're you know, as fluent as this guy, uh, he's the one that comes in with a header, a good cross, pulled back square, and look at that. Shorten's rushing back into the goal and runs into the ball. And as uh, Trevor Brooking said, if he'd put it back the other way where he'd come from, he'd had no chance whatsoever. Yeah. But, uh, it, it, you know, it is, it's desperate stuff, and uh, every England player, that, almost without exception, looks leaden-footed. Well, probably you used to hit them from a few yards, and uh, this guy, that uh, Tchaikovsky, interesting name, uh, mm. has been hitting them from a few yards too, so let's perhaps uh, ask you to pick up these efforts. Well, the England players always seem a little lethargic in midfield. They think the goal there is enough, but running onto a ball like that, a big lad who obviously well, can clout it, you know, it's, it's dangerous. And, and we've been giving them far too much space. Hmm. Uh, the, the pitch is nice. It's nice and smooth. They feel confident in shooting. Maybe there's a little bit of grease on it as well, so it's going to be very skiddy and difficult for the goalkeeper. And they've tried the best, you know, to utilise it to the full. But England have given them so much space and time. Same guy again. Uh, again here, we've got plenty of players, but none of them does anything positive and tries to actually win the ball. And a lot of space and then a chip to the far post, bent round, very difficult for Peter Shilton. Fortunately, he's in top form and was able to push it away. But given far too much space to, to, the, to these players, and they're not bad players, they'll capitalise if we're not careful. Yeah, we haven't but, seen much up front from England, Jim. No, Peter Beardsley's having one of those days again, where his, his sort of delicate little passes are just going to... When the he's off, they're off, as you said at exactly. the beginning. Exactly. And uh, there's nothing else. Lineker's control is not exceptional when he's surrounded by a number of players. They really have given us a football lesson in every department. The mystery of it all is, and uh, it's not the first time, that when England have been together for a number of days, they seem to come out asleep. Shouldn't it's have that Saturday off, you reckon? Well, um... <laughs> We, we can have a look at the one player who has looked lively and has looked, uh, you know, uh, waddle. Yeah. He ha had the possibility of breaking through on two occasions, put a bad cross, and then put a very good cross for the second one, which very nearly brought the goal. But he was there to go past people, and he did it beautifully. And this was a subtle cross. He chips it up very high, beats the keeper with it, you see. Can only get the end of his fingers, and there's Lineker claiming that he was pushed. Or is it Brian Robson there? It's Brian Robson, Robson there, yeah. Captain Marvel in on the far post, trying to get into a goal-scoring position, claiming he was pushed. But uh, that was the one time when, when one of our players has looked fresh and fit and in the same league as the Poles. We were saying beforehand, or I was, that we, to them, are the glamour team. They're the ones that have showed the glamorous football in that half. I, yeah. don't think that, I don't think that they can believe how bad England are, actually, and the space that they're given. We're all playing as individuals, and, and when you get an individual, a good individual like Waddle, he can, he can really perform. Mm -hmm. But everything seems to be just as individuals. There's been no, no build-up, there's been no pattern of play. They've given possession away so easily. Mm -hmm. 
the, the, I bet the Poles can't believe how easy it's Well, they're been putting the wind up us, aren't they, Bob, really, because they, we desperately need that point. Otherwise, you've got to rely on other teams in the group and other groups, you know, it all get a little untidy. We, we always seem to have to go to the last match and we're all biting our fingernails, you know, and, and they could make it so much easier if that attitude was right from the beginning and they got about it. Because they're a far superior team to the Poles, we've got better players, but the attitude just doesn't seem right at the moment. The, 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 Bob, you can't say that on the first half in the way that they played. The Polish skills were oh. so much better than ours in the way that they played. To say we're superior, can be superior to them, we well, haven't shown well, it, have we? Well, my opinion, Jimmy, is yeah. that they're better players. Uh, and if, if we try as hard as them and we play together as well as them, then we'll beat them easily because we are superior. We're giving them too much space and time and we are playing as individuals. You have to get together and we got up together, back together and make sure that we make it as difficult as we possibly can for them because at the moment we're making it too easy. Jack, Jack had the answer saying that, that when his team played badly in the first half, they were over-motivated. Over yeah, very had clever, it. that right is. Bit... That's a good line, that is. <laughs> oh, Bobby will copy him, but they yeah. were over-motivated so they, they couldn't move. Let's pull away from England just for a second, Bob, and, and, and ask you to give us the latest news from Old Trafford because you've been involved in all the, uh, all well, the business there over the last few weeks very much. What's happened? Is Knighton pulling out now or what? Well, it's been, uh, Manchester United has been in the spotlight so much, you know, it's, it's nice to, to be able to say that it seems as though that uh, Michael Knighton hasn't, isn't going ahead with his, uh, with his purchase of the club and it's back to normal and I, I'm, I'm glad that we can get back to a bit of norm normality. What does because that mean, Bob? Does it, Martin Edwards will remain as, uh, as chairman? Yes, he'll stay as chairman and uh, Michael Knighton will come on the board. Um, and we'll have to see how it, how it goes from there. But, Are you happy with really, Michael I'm, Knighton coming on the board? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy that the club is stabilised, yes, yes. But, and and I'm, I'm glad that we can just get down to actually running a football club instead of being kicked, uh, the, the club being kicked about as it has been. I'm glad Absolutely, that it's settled yeah, down. Yeah. Are you likely to be a future chairman? I mean, it's been... No, I, it, it has been voiced, but I have nothing to say on that subject okay. because I have I've no ambitions in that respect. Um, if someone asks you if you would like to be, then you have to say yes, but I have no ambitions in that respect. And nobody's okay. asked me, so it's, it's, it's not relevant really. Thanks for putting us in the problem. picture. Hmm? You uh, lose your hair. You give your advice to him <laughs> there while we go back to the match, uh, Jimmy, because we're all set for the second half. Barry. Yes, Perrin has just got the match underway again, attacking the goal to our left. Walker with the first header, and uh, I think not for the first time among the England defence, which has this impressive record, but about which there are so many doubts. Walker has looked much more comfortable than one or two others. No substitutions by either side during the half-time interval. Information there of the England lineup: five substitutes, of whom two may be used. First header for Vodopchik and for the England captain. Just couldn't get the pass into Peter Beardsley, who actually was just short of the back man. If the pass had been made. As well as looked impressive, Kazmarek of Legia Warsaw. Spadovcic. Useful ball. Ashika has got away. Christoph Ashika, what a good challenge. Came in from uh, Terry Butcher. Wet top surface, aiding the uh, work by the Rangers centre half. to be taken right off the edge of the running track. Not easy to take from this side because of that. The pitch is very tight to the track indeed. That's a goal kick and a little bit of a misunderstanding. Kozetsky not playing the ball where his colleague would have wished. And Peter Shilton was just probably letting his defence know he realises he perhaps could have come for the original through ball that was eventually uh, saved with a tackle very near the goal line by Terry Butcher. Tikhanovsky. This is Chaubert. Massive players back, block the shot from Talzhevich. That was from Robert Bashika. And good for Shilton. performance in England goal, Peter Shilton. He's tend to make uh, the statistics of goals against look like damn lies when uh, looking at it in terms of the quality of the defensive play of the team as a whole. Pierce with the clearance. It's a free kick challenge on Beardsley. Really 
Walker, a lonely figure forward at the moment. Beardsley. Waddle. Really the only one who's taken a pole on in this match. He's done so again successfully. Nobody really in on the cross. Notice with a hairstyle which doesn't suggest Eastern Europe at all, a little extra piece at the back. Walker's clearance. Only to Chaubert. McMahon across. You need to be there because Stevens collected. Mistake by uh, Tchaikovsky. Lineker. At the moment, the need for the long throw, which comes, well claimed. Tchaikovsky. Five, six players forward of him. Pashika, Czekanowski wants it back again, comes good to Novorotsky, this is Czekanowski, trying to get his way through the middle. Cover all on the 18-yard line, but the corner needlessly conceded by Rowcastle. Something easy, says Peter Shilton, a word to that effect. Corner number nine, two already in the second half for Poland. And now we're in double figures. Chaubert. Czekanowski not alive to that, but it actually, by not going there first time, he stayed on side. Chaubert, another corner. See, I think it was Waddle who got there first. So the pressure continues on England. Czekanowski on the six-yard line, four just inside the 18-yard area. Dobchik England moving out but Dobchik going across the line cut out by Pierce first five minutes of the second half have elapsed and it's very much the question of counting down the time the hope so far of England providing a goal which would uh, ease the pulse rate. Foul by Butcher. That's the whistles. And the crowd isn't large, but have certainly made themselves heard. It's Kozetsky who took him on and beat him on the outside. Topchik has come forward to add his height in the middle. Czekanowski and Vashika. Milosevic is in the middle too. Out by Robson. Go kick. Quite a few uh, Swedish press over watching this game. They've got to come here in two weeks, and I'm sure the Swedish team, seeing the Poles perform as they have done, uh, will be quite happy if England could get the draw themselves and so put Poland out of contention. Swedish manager, Nardini, is also here. It will be Poland's last home game in a fortnight, and they then have to go to Albania. And they only just managed to beat at home, but that was with different players and under a different manager. Butcher with the free kick for England. The 
First time we've really seen Pierce get forward. Shika. Oh, what a beautiful ball. Comes to Chaubert. Five inside him. Chaubert's made a bit of room for himself. But as yet, there isn't the finish, Graysby. Lost a little space there. Certainly he left Stevens, but uh, the shot was a disappointment from his point of view. Magnificent pass from our man Shaikovsky again, isn't it? From uh, right to left. Yes, you could almost say he's in tune, couldn't you? I didn't like to say that. It's not the same spelling, I hasten to add. Not quite the same pronunciation either. And he is a pole. This one. Tchaikovsky and uh, Kazmarek really have played well. Built well from the back, so comfortable on the ball. is an area which is worrying for English football. There aren't that many players who play in the Football League who are defensively minded and can come forward in the way these poles are doing and so many other countries players seem to be able to do. This is Podopcik. Certainly not playing in European competition. There's a major drawback for Robbie Robson and indeed for club managers. Podopcik. There, who is interesting Celtic among others. Tchaikovsky has uh, spoken well about him. And Billy McNeil is one of the England managers, well, he's the Scotsman, one of the British managers who have come to watch this match. Mike Ferguson is another. Robert Rashika coming all across, but getting nowhere. Ten minutes of the second half gone. Still nil-nil. And away goes McMahon. He was a bit more determined then than uh, Kazmarek. The top chick. You've got a knock in the back there. Just saw him hobble away. Indeed, he's hobbling all the way to the touchline for some treatment. <laughs> That's nice to see. The player feels that he's well enough to go and get treatment rather than bring the game to a halt. There he is. being made. Ashika is coming off. And, uh, well, I can tell you I didn't see him warming up. On has come Jan Fertog. It's Christoph Ashika who's gone off and there's Jan Fertog of Hamburg. And 
Chikhanovsky has more familiar player with him up front. Played with him many times before. Chikhanovsky has scored 16 times for Poland. He's 51st cap tonight. Fertog, 1821. Children has kept 59 clean sheets in his 111 appearances. Beardley. Alashevich. I haven't seen too much of him in the second half yet. Not too far with challenges like that from Roadcastle. Okay, to be taken again. Kazmarek. Lavrotsky. Vidovchik. With every man behind the ball. Now, except Lineker. Lavrotsky. Show bears on this touch line. This is for Dobchik. Thought about the first time shot. Lineker. Needs to hold while support comes. And support is coming. Waddle making a good run. It was intended to float over the head for Beardsley, but didn't succeed. Chikanovsky. Kuzetsky just inside him. Chakanovsky, in fact, pulling away to the middle. Feel for the ball being out, and the linesman says, yes, it was. Alashevich has gone across to take it. Yes, the linesman was absolutely right. Ball is quickly taken. Lavrotsky. Dobchik again. Should be on the touchline, not used. And a rather disappointing effort from the Polish captain. We do seem to have lost a little bit. The Polish captain here must have had half a dozen shots and uh, sent them all into orbit as well right over goal. And really in those situations, uh, a more composed through ball or across, I think, with Pepe del Dividend. And that really is playing into England's hands because. They can tick away half a minute uh, or a minute by taking a goal kick. Lineker. Now straight into the path of Stevens. Chikanovsky down the middle, watched by Walker. This is Furtock in possession. But his play now a little more studied and a little less inventive as a result. Lineker, half a dummy. He's got four out with him on this attack. Robson makes the run, keeps on side. And the corner is conceded by Navrotsky. The crowd has gone quiet too. The belief that was clearly there in the first half is wavering a little bit for the home side. Lineker and Butcher in among the crowd. Butcher slightly further over than usual. And Robson with the header. And the touch from Lineker straight into the waiting arms of backup. What was up? Clear 
about three ahead of her, Brian Rockson there, and uh, as the cross comes over, just clears the defender, heads it down, and Gary Lineker swiveling, trying to hook it in, I think actually just failing to get the touch, and back over very grateful. Waddle. Stevens. Broadcaster going wide and enjoying their best spell of the match. But it was out now. Waddle with Furtock. Chekhanovsky down the right side. Kaczynski down the left, England pushing up to confine the space for the attack to be built. This is Chaubert. And a bit of space again. England with a pretty solid wall across the 18-yard line. Just pushed up a little bit more as a unit and uh, just as they get into that attacking third of the field, Poland, they're not quite finding the space they did in those first 45 minutes. Here's McMahon. And the bonus that's coming from that is that we are beginning to see a bit more of England in the attack. Robson. Stuart Pearce. Waddle. Broadcastle. Castle behind, and he appears to be in the area. Robson threatening to get there. Lineker. Waddle comes forward too. Time that does not produce the free kick, I hope. Well, the lines were thought that it should. But the referee says no, it was a throw, which has been taken while we looked at the replay of the incident. Kazmarek. Hits it back. Quite too much movement forward for the Poles. Kazmarek trying to inject a bit of pace from the rear. Czekanowski. The first real run he's done, and he was well covered there by Pierce. In the second half, that is, his run. as to which came first, Trevor. England limiting the space 
or the Poles losing their pace. Combination of both. I think when you see uh, so many red shirts in front of you, you feel reluctant or more reluctant to run with the ball as they were doing in that first half. And at the moment, there's no doubt the Martin and Robson sitting just in front of the back four. Both half of them waddle from the letting defenders come onto them. They can go so far, then after that, they're running into a brick wall. Good tackle by Pierce, but it's conceded another corner, which for the record is the 13th. a player who was warming up to move away. I'm curious, he's just well on the track on the far side. Berthock has taken a position in front of uh, Peter Shilton. He makes a good catch. Bashika. Performance of Waddle has certainly limited him in this second period. We saw a lot of him building things in the first. But he's been rather more preoccupied as uh, Waddle has had one or two runs which are beginning to come towards the end of the first half, which has increased perhaps in the second. Offside against Bertok. Past the halfway point of the second half. Still nil nil. England looking to qualify for the World Cup for the seventh time. Once making the finals, one as uh, the previous six as hosts and once as holders. to Kozetsky. Czekanowski. Czekanowski's come up in the attack. Here he is, number two. Trying to set it inside. And it's Steve McMahon who makes it his again. Looked like handball and was. photographers have moved away from being behind the English goal to take a position on the halfway line. You could say they're hedging their bets. This is the most available for the throw. the forward run. Stevens comes outside. We haven't seen him do that yet. He's in a good position to get in a decent cross. Now Talashevich for Poland. Kodetsky on the far side. And he's losing his leg. And the referee... I think may well have the book out against Chris Waddle. He does indeed. Chris Waddle is booked. So it's actually the third England player to have a yellow card against his name. And if people stick with the old rules, a second yellow card against any player would mean he would miss the first match of the World Cup tournament. Waddle booked for the challenge on Kozetsky. An unlikely player to be booked, I think it should be said. Lifted slightly by that. Six Polish players in attacking positions, four in the area, two just outside. 
Ekonowski roughly on the penalty spot. Butcher puts it out of harm's way for yet another corner. 14 opponents have had us against England's two. England's three, they have one in the, in the uh, second half. No great danger. Well met by Waddle. Navrotsky tried to meet it well and didn't. McMahon just gave it leather. Yes. All down in front of me waves in disappointment as the wide player wasn't allowed to get away. Great example there of uh, the English defensive formation there. You see Piersley and Lineker in the picture and, and then the eight other England players all in their own half waiting for the Polish team to come onto them. And once they then get into England's half, that is where they're having the problems of getting the space to run at the defence. Chaubert. Jekanowski. Good touch to Kozetsky, but his shot is wide. Dovchik, Butcher. Dovchik. And the free kick has been given. Again, Stevens. And the referee says no, he doesn't need attention. And then changes his mind. I didn't think he does need attention. Uh, Gary Stevens really has hardly touched him. Uh, having gone down in such a swallow dive, I suppose he's got to make worthwhile the trainers coming on. They've got his free kick and England has got to keep it with the bounce. Kozetsky just has a little hobble away for the touchline. Zorotsky has gone to the right of the player in possession. Rather put off by the two who came to him. I think he didn't really hit the ball truly. This is Jekanowski. He thought he was caught, and I think he had a better case than did uh, Kozetsky a few moments ago. And we're into the last quarter of an hour. Still nil-nil. England just needing one point. Another corner conceded. 15. Dobchik is going to arrive late in the box. At the moment they haven't got anybody in the six-shot area. Two went for it, Butcher went for it and got more of it. Chaubert. Held out by Stevens. Kozetsky. Just the touch. Tarashevich, the second touch, didn't help him, but certainly helped England. But they just brushed off the top of the head and uh, then he came down and had the opportunity but took the extra touch, Trevor. He thought about shooting from that tight angle but realised, I think, uh, his teammates would have been too pleased and then he had to try and clip it across but uh, I think the defenders got back well and they did it clear. It's Waddle. And Rokas are coming up at the back and it's a corner. Waddle certainly has looked the best of the uh, England attackers. Just Lineker in the six-yard area. Butcher just on the 18-yard line. Prepared for the run-in and Robson coming behind him. It's Butcher and it's a goal kick. If hopefully England do uh, hang on and at least get their draw, certainly one of the 
more worrying aspect for the World Cup next summer in Italy will be the fact that there's sort of two new nils against Sweden and, and t tonight as well. The lack of uh, chances that are going in England games at the moment. Uh, it's OK not score it, but the fact that chances aren't being created must be a worry for the World Cup final in the summer. Rowcastle. The rain which had stayed its hand is now starting to fall. Kozetsky. Sadashevich. And then trying to and all the ramparts. Way comes Stevens. And Lineker having to hold while he gets support. He's got it now from Waddle on the left. But there's a certain reluctance to come forward from midfield because the greater priority is not to leave any holes at the back. Waddle again. McMahon is up in the box there alongside Lineker. Not a challenge by Butcher, but a perfectly fair one. Lineker in the middle. Beardsley. Out come the poles. Chaubert not controlling it. Perhaps the rain making the top surface a little more greasy. Two not fancying the rain are beginning to make their way home. This management will be pleased to see that. Really, the empty seats are rather more conspicuous than the, those occupied. A stadium which holds 80,000, I doubt if there's more than about 18,000 at Top Whack. It was said that was the number of seats sold. The manager was very pleased when he heard that the crowd was going to be small. Ten minutes remaining. England ten minutes away from qualifying for the World Cup. There are statistics about last defeats and things like that, but I will not tempt fate. Polls really on their first half performance have been very disappointing for the crowd in the second. It just seemed to run out of steam. Uh they just couldn't get forward in the numbers that uh, they were able to in those first 45 minutes. Probably a bit disappointed that they didn't get the breakthrough. And uh, there's no doubt England have pushed up that little bit more from the back to, to, to work more as a unit rather than get stretched out as they did in that first half. Good positive run. The pullback only finds McMahon, who offers the opportunity again. Butcher just got his head through it. Rocastle only just his foot. Beardsley just enough to put the shot off slightly from uh, Podovcic. One or two streamers of red and white being thrown onto the running track. This is where McMahon wins it once, but then actually, well, he seemed to have it. But in fact, he was well beaten. Heather from Butcher. Camera angle a little bit tight to show you precisely what happened. Podopchik ended up with the shot as he was challenged by Beardsley. This is Stevens. Rowcastle. Beardsley. Lineker. Waddle. Promising return. Bertok. It's not a performance certainly to be compared with uh, going to play in Yugoslavia when a draw was needed. 
victory gained in such an emphatic style. England with the point. Indeed, uh, the suggestion if anybody's going to score, England have got as good a chance as Poland. Certainly wasn't the case in the first half when the Poles ran the match. Join us a bit late. I should tell you that you're really seeing the better part of England. A kick against uh, uh, throw to be taken again. Wonder what Jekanowski had done. One or two of the poles looking rather disappointed and bedraggled in the rain. seem for the locals even more grey tomorrow morning if England survive another six and a bit minutes. Waiting in the queues will seem that much longer. Offside. Choice of two, either Beardsley on the far side or Lineker in the middle. Given against Beardsley. Four forward for Poland. Three in the middle of the field. Janowski offers himself on the right and the offside decision is against Furtok. Hasn't really been able to contribute very much. Stevens. Rowcastle. into the last five minutes. Place in Italy so near. McMahon. We get given for the pullback. Nabrowski. And England really team waiting at the hotel desk waiting to be given the key to take their place Waddle has come across to this side Rowcastle there with him Brian Robson on the far side of the area Butcher comes forward a little late England in no hurry to take the kick Waddle takes it Butcher at the back goes to collect the ball. Free kick. And Stokowski. Stokowski. Three and a half minutes left. a memorable night in any way save for the result if we are to get it but here is Chaubert somebody's lost the boot I think it's Rowcastle oh what a disappointing shot from Robert Bashika well fingers crossed now just a couple of minutes to go and uh, I'm sure Everyone would be delighted, as much as anything, for Bobby Robson, who's had to take a, a lot of uh, stick over the last few months. But he's got his team, hopefully, to Italy, with a batting performance rather than, as you say, Barry, a memorable one. And, and one really, and I'm sure the players will realise, it, it's been sort of a battle against uh, really his near attack. We've never really got forward as an attacking force. And 
and uh, hopefully, you know, we can improve as the months go on up to, leading up to Italy. Beardley. This is perhaps a team to get you to the finals and a team to do well when you get there. And that's the problem that uh, Bobby Robson is going to have to resolve when there are changes to be made that will improve our chances of uh, impressing in the Italian finals. Significant, again, that one doesn't have to look any further than the number one position to know who is the man of the match. Peter Shilton. But for him, we will be telling a very different tale. Well, he's here. Minutes and a half, I make it on my watch. The referee makes that uh, counts, of course. Poles go away and build for the European Championship. Certainly they've been a uh, far better side than played at Wembley. Predictably so. And their performance in the first half will give some hope to them. But they will want to know why they dropped off from that standard in the second. Yes, Bertok. David Roadcastle has got there with the uh, bank pass, and we're inside the last minute. Waddle in possession, able to turn with some comfort. Beardley, Waddle, Lineker. remembering in Italy what happened to Dino Zoff at a similar age when he played in a World Cup final. But of course give Peter Shilton the chance to establish a new record to pass Pat Jennings record if England do well enough. Perhaps it's before. And in it, if we're there, but it's not all over yet here. And that's not a bad try, it came off the crossbar. Shilton beaten for the first time and it came rattling back off the crossbar. Really thumping drive from Vashika. And it was above the hand of Shilton and smacked back.